celebrating, still celebrating the sea and on this coming together of a great tribe. It's a great group of people who've come together this week and we appreciate so much of being a part of this. There's been such a palpable energy that's been throughout all the venues and we're so happy to have all of you be a part of that. Uh, continuing on our, our mission and our theme of encouraging stewardship of our ocean and our planet, Tonight's film is one of those especially important that, to that, and as well as its ambassador and someone who took part in that. And many of you know we have uh, the acclaimed actor Jeremy Irons with us tonight. And we're especially thrilled. Jeremy has accomplished many things in his life, and I would have to say I am very, very grateful for the energy and the time and the effort he's taken to come here and be with us. And it truly was. He was on a shoot, came directly here. Uh, I mean, it, he really made an effort, and that is such a contribution. And his, his commitment to a better planet is, uh, is amazing and inspiring. And we would love to uh, pay tribute to that. Jeremy, if you could please come on up. Give me a try to read this, but I don't want to amble off the subject. The making waves of war. Why me? Compared with many of the hundred speakers um, who addressed the Blue Ocean Festival, shown their films, and educated us with their scientific knowledge, I am no environmentalist. I am a messenger. The film you're about to see has been shown at around 50 festivals, including Cannes. It's been nominated for 15 awards and won nine. I have shown it to the new president of Indonesia, members of the European Parliament, the British Parliament, the Scottish Assembly, the French National Assembly, the New York Mayor's Office, the New York Times, and now you. It's been licensed to be transmitted in Italy, Japan, Taiwan, Germany, and Argentina. We're still trying to raise the budget to distribute a version to schools around the world and create the subtitles needed in all the necessary languages. Yes, I'm still looking for money. <laughs> for it is the children who we must educate if we are to reverse the irresponsible behavior of our generation. I'm sad that my late arrival at the festival means that I haven't been able to share in the lectures, screenings, and discussions. But I'm aware that over 100 organizations have taken part, scientists, environmentalists, and filmmakers. Information has been shared, topics discussed, and different viewpoints argued. It's clear from the success of this festival and other environmental festivals around the world, that more and more people are deeply concerned about the state of our oceans. And yet, nothing seems to be changing. Why is that? Let us be clear that we are engaged in a battle. A battle as wide as the ocean that is worldwide. It is a 
battle against disorganized and cynical governments and against commercial entities both on land and at sea who prefer to turn a blind eye to the pollution they cause and the destruction left in their wake. It is a battle against those who refuse to recognize global warming and the consequent slow acidification of our seas. It is a battle against all of us who demand a constant supply of plentiful and affordable fish. It is a battle against all of us who refuse to recognize that with our ballooning global population, we must all share in changing our lifestyles to accommodate a world of finite resources. The truth is that those we battle against have almost unlimited financial resources. But does that mean they are destined to be the victors in the sacrifice of our only world? I believe that if every person on our planet understood the danger it was in, they would do everything in their power to help preserve it. And that is where we need the messengers. I have two proposals, and to you, my generous hosts, I throw down the gauntlet. Environmentalists and scientists are not always the best communicators, often working in isolation from each other. I propose Blue Ocean starts a website to gather all oceanic environmental organizations in all countries together, a website designed to put those working together category by category so they might share discoveries and solutions and build on that knowledge in a shared and transparent way. This could become the site of choice for anybody researching or educating on oceanic environmental issues. And secondly, I propose that Blue Ocean sets up an environmental film commission dealing with environmental issues whose remit would be to encourage the writing of mainstream films, scripts, as well as documentaries, and to be a major part of the funding of any of these scripts which they judge to be of sound worth. Those living along this beautiful coastline, allied with your partners living in beautiful Monaco, must constitute some of the most financially successful people on the globe. Who better to send a clear environmental message to the world? Who better to start to fund such an undertaking? An undertaking that could have some of the most important and beneficial results for the future generations 